Hey guys, it's Jeff, and my hydroponic garden has a problem. No, it's not these beautiful tomatoes here. It's the fact that it's growing so crazy that it's using so much water. So we're gonna fix that. I'll show you how. If you want a hydroponic garden update with all of our tomatoes, our onion, some zucchini, Make sure you stick around till the end. Currently, my system uses a 12 gallon reservoir. I thought that was gonna be enough. Turns out it's not. So we are going to plumb in a 50 gallon external reservoir that's going to auto feed into our regular 12 gallon for a total of 62 gallons of nutrient. Okay, so how are we gonna do this? We have our hydroponic garden reservoir right here. We have a cinder block, a cinder block, and then another level. We are going to put our big 50 gallon reservoir up here like a water tower. Then we are going to have a little pass through here. It's going to come down 90. We're gonna put a vol valve in here. So that way when we are filling our reservoir with our nutrient inside of it, we don't get super concentrated nutrient that drops down into our 12 gallon regular tank. It's going to come over here and then come down and there's going to be a float valve right here, which is going to automatically shut off when the water level reaches up high enough. So that's how we're gonna do this. Let's get to it. Okay, I must admit though that I cheated because I've already set up my pass through. I'll show you how though, there's just some silicone around here and I cut this with a handsaw. And all it is, is a half inch coupling that's threaded and a male adapter. And we screw the two together. Of course there's silicone and pipe dope right in between the two. And then I went along this line with a handsaw and cut it off. So that way, when we have the water sitting in here, we don't have, you know, an inch inch and a half of water we end up just with a half inch of water that doesn't get drained the whole concept though to make this work this reservoir has to be elevated the reason for that is because we still need to come down which you can see my pass through right here we need to come down 90 across and go straight down into our current reservoir so that everything has head pressure pushing it down just like a water tower so let's drill a hole I've got a three quarter bit here and we're just going to choose down in the corner here, someplace that's out of the way. And since I'm using half inch pipe, I'm going to have to waller this, this uh, drill bit out a little bit, which is fine. And yes, you're probably wondering why I'm using an impact gun. It's because my drill is at my house and my hydroponic garden is at my girlfriend's house. Now you may be asking yourself, why, why don't I just hook this reservoir and replace it into this one? It's because I want the full capacity and this is already completely done up to where I will be able to just hook it up and it'll be fine, good to go. And I don't have to change the pump plumbing or anything along those lines. Back to our makeshift table, we are going to get this float valve ready. This is what I was talking about. It is a float valve and the way that it works is once water reaches the certain limit, it shuts off and you can't get any water out of it. It's pretty simple really, but I had to order this from Amazon. So if you need it, I will leave a link below down in the description. What we need to do is create an adapter that ends up with a 90 degree angle. So we're going to have to connect this float valve straight into this coupling that's threaded to a male adapter. And then I've got a street 90 on here. I'm not sure if the street 90 is the exact right size. I also have a regular 90. So this isn't connected yet. So in order to do this correctly, we need to both put Teflon tape and pipe dope on the threaded areas. So that's what we're gonna do. Is your first time working with plumbing? Then something to know is that you always want your tape to be wrapped clockwise. So that way when you tighten something down, it is tightening the tape, it's not loosening the tape. 
And if you've watched my one of my previous videos, I use both pipe dope and thread sealer, or thread sealer and Teflon tape, which this is thread sealer or pipe dope, depending on who you ask. It is extremely hot, so we're painting that on there way too thick. But the good news is it wipes off. In, real, in reality, these threads might be okay because they are not going to be under pressure because they're not going to be under pressure at all, except from the water that is in the reservoir. Also, I don't know if I'm gonna leave that in, but I totally stuck the wrong end onto the, uh, the pipe dope when I was uh, paying attention to the camera. So the good news is pipe dope, although it's messy, it can be completely wiped out. Just use a paper towel. Now tightening this, you can tighten it just like this because you've got two different joints that you were tightening. So go right ahead and just tighten both of them down. All right, that should definitely be tight enough. Like I said, it's not gonna be under pressure. So now we have the first part of our float valve assembly. All right, I have disassembled part of my, my hydroponic garden because we're going to move some stuff around here, but you can tell that the roots are happy. Jeez, we got roots all the way down into the reservoir. All right, I said that about the roots and then I accidentally cut them off when I reattached my drain pipe after moving the lid. But I am here to check the level for this float valve. And if I put it as high as possible, as you can see, we're just going to be a little bit above where the water level is currently, which is great because we want to keep at least this much water in this reservoir so that pump is completely submerged. So that means we are going to make it as tight to the top as we possibly can. So in order to do that, we just need to glue a piece of pipe right in the end here and have it slid through our hole, just like that. Put my drain pipe back on. Now we have that as high as it can possibly go. Can't pull it up any farther. Now, all we have to do is put a ball valve in and somehow connect this to this, which means a 90 ball valve and another 90. The things you do to get the shot for YouTube. If that's not worth a like and subscribe, I don't know what is. So what we are gonna do here, is we're gonna take this street 90 and connect it right there. We've got our glue and our cleaner. First we clean our fitting. Then we're gonna put a little PVC glue in there, which obviously I could have made that a little less messy, but it's going to be okay. Push this together and twist. And to give us an idea of what direction we're heading, we'll stick this bad boy in there because once this sets up, it's going to be hard to adjust. All right, the next step is going to be to just make up our ball valve assembly. Doesn't have to be that long, so we're just gonna go ahead and cut this off because we don't need any fine measurements yet. And we're just going to turn this in half so that way you don't get a bunch of glue down in there. And then we're going to prime it and prime our pipe. And then go ahead, try to wipe off a little bit of glue so you don't waste a ton of it. And glue the ball valve and our pipe together. And now we have a working ball valve assembly. Now we just gotta glue this end in. All right, I'm gonna give you guys the bird's eye view here. So if you've never used a ball valve before, if it's closed across, that means it's closed. If it's open across, it means it's open. If it's in a straight line with it. We're gonna close it for right now and go ahead and glue this end into our 90 we got coming out of our reservoir. So two-step gluing process again, primer, and a little bit of PVC glue. 
which, and then we'll go ahead and stick it in there, twist our ball valve till it's about level. Now you can see that it's kind of hanging down, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. As long as we can hold it up when we connect the 90 from this pipe to that pipe. We're going to do a very scientific cut here where I'm going to cut this pretty much as close to the bottom as I can. And so we're gonna do a little trick here. I've got a pair of channel locks, which I guess if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna show you with a Sharpie, this, since we had one for drawing stuff. So that's where we're gonna have our cut line be. All right, we are holding on with our channel locks. We're gonna come down here, snip this off, We've still got a hole with our channel locks here. This is so it doesn't fall down in here. Now we are going to start our process for gluing primer. A little bit of glue. And we're gonna come back. I'm gonna put some pressure back on these so that they don't fall down. glue our 90 on there pointing directly towards the other side sorry for the feedback from the pump but i didn't want to stop my system for this video wait just a second and now it should be able to hold itself up now we just have to do one final thing to finish plumbing the reservoir and that's to connect this piece here so we're going to take a measurement looks like oh well, four and a half will be fine Come over to our pipe, get four and a half inches, holder there, and yes, I am marking that with my thumb. Come in here, cut that. Now we've got our perfect piece to go in here. Now this, if you've never done it before, is the tricky part. We're going to glue the entire pipe all at once which if you've worked with plumbing materials before, this is a duh, but it's super easy. Get some glue on everything, get some primer on everything. And now we are going to stick one side in and then everything together, just like that. We wait a couple minutes Try to make sure that that stays level. And now we can fill our reservoir up because this is closed. It's not gonna allow anything to go down into it. Okay, so we have an open reservoir, but we gotta put nutrient in it before we fill it with water. Make sure our ball valve is off. And I use a three-part nutrient, which is Master Blend. I got it off Amazon, it's worked great. If you can't tell by the plants that are completely out of control, I'll leave a link for it in the description if you're interested. But in order to mix it, it gives you a five gallon recipe, in case you can't tell. And that's two teaspoons. Doing the math, to mix 50 gallons, that comes out to like 0.6 of a cup. So we're gonna use a heaping half a cup for these two, and then half a cup for the Epsom salt because it's normally only a teaspoon and a half. You are down in the reservoir right now. So we're gonna do a heaping of the master blend. Cheers. Another heaping of the calcium and just a flat half cup of Epsom salt. I gotta get you out of there. That camera's not waterproof. And now for the most satisfying part. Let's find out if our plumbing is going to hold. And now we wait. Let's check on our plumbing while this fills up. So come down here. We don't have any leaks yet. Looks like our silicone is appearing to hold, even though it's flapping in the wind there. But I also siliconed that two days ago. I just haven't had time to work on this. So let's fill this bad boy up, and I'm sure it's gonna take a while. So something that we don't think about, 
this needs to be on there because when you pull the lid off, there's no support. Everybody say hi to my girlfriend, Deb. I'm breathing heavy because I'm fighting with this. So I'm going to have to develop a lid at a later date where I can fill this with this completely on. Whew. But it's a moment of truth. Let's turn this on, see if it actually will stop. Editing Jeff here. It works. I just had to go clean out the gunk from uh, mixing the hydroponic nutrient. So the fill valve does work. So let's let's just be happy for that. All right, so we've had a lot of growth from our pumpkin and we've moved our strawberries to this location. We've still got a carrot down here, just chilling. Our bean plant's really starting to take off as is our watermelon and our cucumber, which is awesome. That's what we want to see. Our basil's doing great. Tomatoes are getting very, very tall. And if we come over here, you can see that we have more pumpkin that's spreading out and we have a zucchini right in here. We might as well just cut the zucchini off, huh? It doesn't want to fall right off. There, it wanted to fall right off. So there, we've got a zucchini. We also have harvested a few cherry tomatoes and it just so happens if we go way back in here, we've got one that's about ready. So I'm gonna pull this off and you know what? It's not completely ripe, but let's eat it. Oh yeah, that's good, even for not being ripe. So is this water tower going to work? Honestly, I have no idea, but check back in a future video to find out. Thanks for watching so far, guys, and I appreciate you hanging out with me on this journey. So like I've said before, this is just one giant experiment. I knew nothing about hydroponic systems going in, so that means you can learn too. If you've made it this far, can you please like and subscribe? It really helps push this out to other people. And you know, nobody's got your family like you've got your family. So have a way to grow some food at home. We'll see you in another video.